guys, it's Sue, you're not so crafty crafter. Tonight, or this morning by the time I get this loaded, I'm coming to you with a little bit of a technique that's one of my favorites. I'm not going to do a whole process video where I make the whole card and everything. I'm just going to share a technique I use for creating backgrounds. Now, you'll see on some of these cards, there's a really pretty watercolor wash. You see that? that and even that with the very light shade of color there i've got a few more here that i've been playing with just this evening these are so easy to make and so pretty and i thought i would share it with you it's not my creation i've seen lots of crafters card makers designers i've seen jennifer mcguire do this technique a few times I've seen Kay Warner do this technique a few times. I've seen a lot of people that do art journals do this technique for backgrounds. It's fun. It's easy. It's something I like to do when my mojo takes a walk. Uh, or I'm, even if I'm just stressed and I've had a bad day, I'll come in here and I'll throw some watercolor on some paper and just run with it. Um, you can use your watercolors, but today I'm going to use my Distress inks, my minis here. Um, I've just started collecting these. I really like these Tim Holtz inks. They're awesome. Um, I did get some larger inks today. I went to Hobby Lobby. I was they have 30% off on Tim Holtz products at Hobby Lobby this week, so you might want to jump on that if you're a Tim Holtz fan. Um, I was, my intent was to buy two or three more of the four packs, but they had the full size ones on clearance and it was cheaper than the 30% off. So I went ahead and grabbed a few. Um, I grabbed cracked pistachio, carved pumpkin, peacock feathers, which I do have in a mini, but I had to grab a big one because I do love the color so much. Picket fence. I don't have a white ink at all. So I went ahead and grabbed that. Mermaid Lagoon and Candied Apple. So, and I think I'll use that a lot for Christmas cards. So anyway, I'm using my Distress Inks tonight for this. You don't need a lot of product to do this. Two or three colors. You can use inks. When you look at these, this one was made with the Distress Inks. There's three colors actually. This one was actually made using Stamping Up inks. I used a blue and a yellow. And then this one was actually made using a stamping up marker. And if I have time, I'll show you how I did that too. So, um, and the other thing you need is a stamp block. This is not a lot unlike jelly printing, only you're not using a jelly. You're using a solid piece, your acrylic block here. So <clears throat> I have two pieces of paper here. I'm going to do two different techniques with these. This first one is just plain watercolor paper. They're both watercolor paper, actually. Um, it's Dale Rowney. And I picked it up at Walmart. It was a three pack of this, Dale Rowney. It's 90 weight watercolor paper. It's nine by 12 and I cut it down for my card bases. Um, it was a three pack, I think it was like $4.97. There's 10 in each pack, so there was 30 sheets. So I thought that was a pretty decent deal, especially since I'm only using them for cards. So, <clears throat> and then you need a water bottle and maybe something heavy to put on your block. Now the first thing we're going to do, I did, like I said, this first piece is five and a quarter by five and a quarter because it's going to go on a five and a half by five and a half card base. And this second one is cut, it was uh, the cast off of this piece. It's almost four inches by six inches. So it's like three and seven eighths by six inches. So we're going to use that for something else. Well, let's go ahead and start with this one. And this is so easy and it's so much fun. If you like working with watercolors at all or watercolor paints, you'll like doing this technique. Um, as I said, you can use watercolor markers. You can use water-based markers, water-based inks. You can even use your watercolors, smear some watercolor around here, nice and creamy, and then mist it down. And it'll pretty much make the same effect. I'm going to go ahead and put my ink right on to my block. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm going to try and do it in a configuration where I can get some blending. So I'm going to go ahead 
go in here with my picked raspberry and put a nice coating of that on there easy peasy then I'm gonna go with my peacock feathers I can get it open there we go and I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna kind of come over here into the red a little bit into the pink just so that when I mist it down and it starts to slide across the plate a little bit I'll get some purple out of that and then my yellow my scattered straw and I gotta be careful I don't want to get too much blue ink on my thing but I'm bringing it in over just a little bit and really nice heavy coating of this so that your colors are going to be nice and bright then you're going to take your mister and you're just going to mist your block just like that the more water you use the more fluid it'll be on the block and you see it's going to start to blend a little bit there i don't know if you can see it but there's some green forming right there then the next thing you're going to do is you're just going to take it and flip it over onto your paper now what is it i've seen jennifer mcguire do this a few times and recently she did one where she suggests that you put something heavy on the block and you do it for about five minutes um she said the reason you do this is so that because you're using watercolor paper it's textured and it's also absorbent you want that color to be absorbed into the paper you don't want it just laying across the top you really want it the paper to soak in that color so in the five minutes she recommended, she said she'd tested a few different times. Five minutes is a good time because it gives your paper enough time to absorb some of the moisture, all the water with color, but it's not too long that it's starting to dry because if it's dry and you peel the paper away from your block, some of the paper may stick to your block. So we're gonna go ahead and leave this set for five minutes. I'm gonna pause you. And then I will come back in a little bit and show you what's up. So, okay, we're back. I went ahead and timed this for five minutes so that paper and water and paint can mix and do their magic. And so let's see what we have here. I'm just going to lift this up off of here. Now sometimes there will be some puddling and some pooling and all you need to do with that is go ahead and take a baby wipe and just kind of dab it up a little bit. You can leave it if you want it. It'll just take a little longer to dry. And you can see how there is more of the color towards the bottom than the, towards the top. It's probably because of the way I had this weighted punch on the block. But it turned out really pretty. And if you look at it really closely, you can see where the colors blended a little bit. I didn't want it blending too much because I didn't want mud. And you can see where like some of this along the bottom is a little muddy. But you can also see the purple in here and then the little bit of green in here. And it's so pretty. And it actually brings out the texture of the paper. Now I'm going to just use this simply as a background for my card base and then I'll probably cut something out either like this from my cuddle bug using some dyes that I have or maybe I'll cut something out on the Cricut using some glitter paper <clears throat> or metallic paper that I have set aside um, but that's all there is to that it's super super easy and it's super pretty and it's super fun so the next thing I'm going to show you is pretty much the same idea I'm just going to use a marker instead of my ink pads um, all i'm gonna do same thing. i have a little different size sheet of paper here this was the cast off of the five and a half or the five by five paper that i had i cut a nine by twelve sheet of paper yeah nine by twelve into four pieces i had two five and a half or two five and a quarter and five and a quarter and then two four by sixes left over so and this just actually fits the block perfectly this is the same size as that so what I'm going to do like I said pretty much the same technique I'm going to take my block and I'm just going to take my marker and go over the entire block and you can hear sorry the squeaking of the, 
the marker on the glass. You can do this however you want. You can put designs in there. You can do more than one color if you like and let them blend in the middle. With these markers, I just like doing one solid color. And it's such a fun technique. Oop, my cover just went flying. Oh, some extra color in there. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to mist it with your water sprayer. This one's got a lot of water on it, so it's going to be nice and juicy. And I'm just going to go ahead and let it roll a little bit so it's not... And place that right on top of my paper. Oh, look how pretty that color is. This is a Stampin' Write marker by Stampin' Up. And this color is called Bermuda Bay. And this is actually one of the, the basic colors that they have in their line. So... You can look for that and the markers. I love their markers. They have a brush tip and a very fine point tip. So it makes it easy to do stuff like this. And you're going to do the same thing with this. You're going to put this something heavy on it. Actually, maybe I'll do it that way so the weight is a little more evenly distributed. I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to show you, excuse me, what that is going to look like when it's done. I'm not going to make you wait five minutes. This is what you're going to end up with. A nice solid wash of color. Again, you can use this as a background for your card, which is what I do. Or you can actually use your one of your punches and cut out designs. One thing I think I'm going to do, I made Christmas cards last year. And I used pretty much the same technique, only instead of using markers or ink, I used my gelatos and I used two colors. I used a blue and then I used a metallic blue. This way they wouldn't get muddy if they got mixed. And basically did the same thing. I took my gelato, scribbled it on my block, misted it, blended the two colors and set it on like this. And the paper had a nice metallic sheen. And I think what I'm going to do this year is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the same two colors, but I'm going to punch snowflakes out of it. How cool is that going to be? A metallic snowflake. For my Christmas cards and I'll just using some watercolor paper and my inks and my pens. I hope you've enjoyed this little watch and learn on one of my favorite techniques and I hope I can find other techniques that I can share with you. Don't forget to hit like, a thumbs up and subscribe and if you need to feel the need to give me a thumbs down leave a a, a, a constructive criticism on what I can do differently about this. Um, I have fun doing these videos and I like sharing what I'm learning. Um, some of my, uh, I think my, my tagline and my YouTube channel is I'm, you know, I'm learning as I'm going and I'm sharing what I'm picking up along the way. And I'd like it if you shared with me as well. Uh, that's all I have for now. Have a great night. Bye, guys.